We'll now turn to an example that will uh, give you the substantive types of questions that you can ask in the Lakeham transition analysis setting. So that will be a motivator for all the different methodologies that we're going to try out in this web talk. So one single example is going to be used throughout the whole web talk. And the example has to do with reading proficiency. We're going to use data from the Early Childhood Longitudinal Study, Eccles K, with a nicely uh, sized sample of 3,500 children. And we uh, have four time points, fall and spring of kindergarten and fall and spring of grade one. We're going to consider five binary items as the latent class indicators. And they represent the mastery of or proficiency in basic reading skills of letter recognition, beginning sounds, that is the sounds of beginning letters of words, ending sounds, sight words, that is words that a child can recognize without uh, thinking through the various letters. And we have words in context, the most advanced proficiency of these five. We're going to hypothesize that there are three latent classes corresponding to three stages of learning, low alphabet knowledge, early word reading, early reading comprehension. We're going to use a covariate. It's a binary covariate poverty, indicating whether or not the, children's house, the child's household is below or above the U.S. Census poverty threshold. And uh, this analysis draws on the analysis in Kaplan 2008 in developmental psychology where you also see references to um, uh, the data collection and the uh, creation of the five binary items. Turning to slide five, here you have a prototypical LTA. You have two time points and for each time point we measure these five indicators and for each time point we have a latent class variable C1 for time 1, C2 for time 2. And we're going to consider three parts to this model. Measurement part, initial status part, and a transition part. The measurement probabilities describe the relationship between the latent variable, latent class variable, and the indicators, the observed indicators. And we're going to express that relationship in terms of the probabilities because these dependent variables are categorical binary. So we have an LCA, or latent class analysis, for each time point. And we are going to assume, typically, that the measurement characteristics here are the same across time. Second part is the initial status. What are the probabilities of the latent classes in the beginning of this repeated measurement situation? Third part is the transition probabilities. How does C1 influence C2? How do changes in latent class membership at time 1 uh, get turned into latent class probabilities at time 2? What are the probabilities for staying in the same class versus moving to another class? Now, there are many variations on this basic theme. Uh, you may want to study, for instance, measurement invariance across time. Is it does it hold very well or not at all for some of the items? You may want to bring in covariates, like the poverty covariate. That can then have an effect on the latent classes as well as an effect on the latent transitions. You buy that covariate, you can also divide the sample in, in this case into two, poverty and non-poverty, and do a kind of a multiple group or two group analysis to study measurement invariance across individuals across individuals with respect to the poverty covariate. You can also have direct effects from the covariate to the latent class indicators and in that way establish whether or not you have measurement invariance across individuals. Furthermore, you can have a distal observed outcome that comes that is observed later on in time and we will see towards the end of our web talk, how you handle those kinds of distal outcomes and model them as a function of 
the latent class memberships and the transitions. Finally, uh, we're also going to talk at the end of the web talk a little bit about a model called a mover stayer model, where movers are following a regular LTA and the stayers are individuals who have probability one of staying in the same class and therefore probability zero of transitioning to a different class. Slide six shows then the first part that we talked about, the measurement part of the model. And this is derived from an analysis using, using regular LTA with four time points. So we have the three latent classes and they are the three columns in this table. And the five rows are the five items, the latent class indicators measuring these latent classes. And the entries are probabilities, conditional probability of getting letters, rec letter recognition correct. If you're in class one, it's about a 50% chance of getting that right. If you're in class two, it jumps up to 99%. And in class three, it's certain that you're going to get that right. Now, looking at the beginning sounds item, you have a very low probability of getting that right in class one, but a very high probability of getting it right in class two. So that's a good uh, discriminator between being in class one or two. Likewise, ending sounds has an almost zero probability in class one, whereas it's sizable in class two and almost certain in class three. Likewise, sight is a very discriminating item. It doesn't get sizable until you belong to class number three of early reading comprehension then you have you get the site word item correct. Now this is uh, held those probabilities are held equal across all time points in a baseline type of model and this output is provided under the heading latent class indicator means and probabilities for each latent class. Second part is perhaps the most important one having to do with tr the transitions uh, hence the name latent transition analysis. Now we're going to consider a transition matrix for only the first two time points, although the analysis is based to a four time point analysis. So we're going to consider transitioning from fall of kindergarten to spring of kindergarten. So the latent classes are then both the columns and the rows. So we're saying for those who started in fall of kindergarten in class one, you have a 34% chance of staying in that class, 65% chance of moving on to class two, which is desirable, and a very small chance of jumping all the way to class three in spring of kindergarten. If you belong to class two at the start of kindergarten, you have almost 0% chance of falling back, of unlearning what you knew at the end of kindergarten. You have a sizable chance of staying in the same class at the end of kindergarten, and you have a bit of a chance to move on to class three at the end of kindergarten. If you're fortunate enough to start in class three in kindergarten fall, fall you're certain to stay there at the end of kindergarten. So you see this characteristic of zeros in the lower triangular part of the matrix so that people move forward and don't fall back. And this transition table, transition matrix, is provided under the heading latent transition probabilities based on the estimated model. Now here we uh, put together <coughs> the uh, time one probabilities, time two probabilities, and the transition probabilities. So let's see how to read this. So the rows are the latent classes, and here we have the probabilities at time one for the latent classes. So we have a fairly high probability of being in the lowest class in the fall of kindergarten and a sizable probability also for being in class two, but a very small probability of, of being in class three already in the fall of kindergarten. And then we have the transition matrix, those probabilities that we just looked at here in the middle. And from those two quantities, we can then compute the time two 
probabilities for the three classes. That is, the uh, probabilities for the classes in the spring of kindergarten. And how do we do, do that? Well, if you look here, we can ask ourselves, how can we end up in class 1 at time 2? C2 equals 1. Well, we could start time 1 and stay in time 1. Sorry, stay, start at class 1 and stay in class 1. That's this product, that probability. And another possibility is that we start in class 2 and fall back into class 1. Very small chance, but we write it out here. Or you could start in class 3 and fall the, all the way back to class 1 with zero probability. If you add these up, you get the value 0 0.235. Or, and you can ask, um, how do you end up in class 2? Well, you can start in class 1 and move over to class 2 here, make that transition with this probability, this product, or you can start in class 2 and stay in class 2, or start in class 3 and move back to class 2, but that happens with probability 0. Adding that up, we get the value that we have in the right column. How do you end up in class 3? Well, you can start in class 1 and move to class 3, low probability however, or you can start in class 2 and move to class 3, you get that term, or start in class 3 and stay there. And if you add those up, you get the probability here. So this is saying that knowing time 1 probabilities, the initial status probabilities, and the transition matrix, you get time 2 probabilities as a result. It's not a separate type of parameters here, they follow from the other parameters. Those who like matrix algebra, they would see this as a, a vector, row vector, multiplying a matrix, giving this vector. This is provided in the output under the heading Final Class Counts and Proportions for each latent class variable based on the estimated model. On slide 9, uh, I show another interesting way of looking at the uh, data using latent transition analysis. We're going to take a look at typical transition paths. This is for regular LTA with four time points. And in the table here, I give you the estimated frequencies for the three most frequent paths through the latent class variables across the four time points. So here are the paths. One, two, and three are the rows. And the time points are fall of kindergarten, spring, kindergarten, fall of first grade, spring, first grade. And here are the number of people and the percentage of the total sample size. So the most common transition path is starting in the lowest class in fall of kindergarten and, and going up to class 2 in the spring of kindergarten. And then over the summer, not much happens, and they stay in class 2, whereas they move over to the desirable class 3 by spring of first grade. So 33% follow that pattern. Second most common pattern is that the child starts in class 2 already in the fall of kindergarten, stays in that class through kindergarten and at the beginning of first grade, and then moves over to class 3 in the spring of first grade. 13% follow that. Third most likely class starting at class 2 and already in kindergarten moving up to class 3. Staying in class 3 then throughout first grade. 10% of the kids do that, according to regular LTA. This kind of information is interesting and is provided in the Tech 15 output under the heading Final Class Counts and Proportions for the Latent Classes based on the estimated model. 